Wallet Guard, I feel that you guys have gotten a ton of attention over the past uh, 24 hours with the whole Kevin Rose hack. So quick things before we get into what you guys are doing. What's your kind of quick reaction to what happened to Kevin Rose? Yeah, so with the Kevin Rose situation, um, basically what had happened was he went to a website, connected his wallet, and what happens is the wallet gets scanned immediately upon connection um, for like set approval for alls, uh, so any active approvals that he might have. So for example, in this case, he had some open active approvals on OpenSea. So what the attacker does in this case is creates a Seaport uh, signature um, design to private sale or like list it for like zero ETH to like a private sell um, to the scammer. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I feel like this has happened to a fair other people too, but like, I mean, the, the weight of it happen, happening to Kevin Rose seems to be really felt. So, I mean, for you guys, is this a moment in time when you're like, hey, like now is the time to get the word out or have you been doing some other things to uh, get people aware of it up until this point? Oh, no, it's always time to get the word out. You know, yeah. we, we're doing weekly security spaces in the, in the wallet guard on Twitter spaces. So we're always trying to advocate for security. And, and the reason why is because a lot of people, they're not thinking about security until it's too late, until they've already dealt with getting their assets taken or dealing with some sort of rug. Uh, so it, it, it generally, you know, this is our lives. You know, we're, we're, we've been pushing it. Wallet guard officially this month is, has been in development for a year. So this is this is something that we we want to get in front of people's faces for sure. Awesome. So can you guys give us a little bit of a background about yourselves, uh, how this got started, and then uh, how it's it's been going, uh, kind of growing up from nothing to where it is today. Yeah. So Wallet Guard again, like Michael said, started a year ago. Um, so my background, uh, my name is Ohm, by the way. Um, my background was in cybersecurity. I've always been passionate about security since I was, I want to say, fifteen. And going off of that passion, I went to school for computer science. Um, and then when I got out of school, even during school, I was doing cybersecurity work. Um, and I got out of school, um, got a job at like a Fortune 500 like consulting firm, like the largest cybersecurity consulting firm in the world. Um, and I did offensive security for them. So that in essence means like I would be paid to um, essentially attack like a company and um, write up a report and then help them remediate vulnerabilities. Um, so basically offensive security or pen testing is another term it's called. Um, and then uh, Martin, who's not actually on this call today, he's the other co-founder. Um, he reached out a while back um, talking about like how scams were increasing and like if there was something we could do about it and the more and more we started talking um you know he got up on a twitter space one day and asked like what if it was a chrome extension or something like that and the idea just started spiraling from there he came back to me after that twitter space and we just started brainstorming on what we could do and he went to work right away on building an mvp i went to work on establishing our brand and getting our name out there um and fast forward a little bit um <clears throat> we ha added another two team members on um added a third co-founder um just recently brought on michael actually officially this month um to help us with partnerships and collaborations uh michael also has a very interesting background so michael i'll let you go ahead yeah uh, I i've been in it pretty much my whole life you know ever since i was young i started up my own it company ended up merging with a larger one, opening you know, a, few, a few computer stores and handling a bunch of business contracts. We were an MSP and we also did uh, residential computer services. So being in a background of IT and cybersecurity pretty much my entire life, uh, you know, really once I saw what WallerGuard was doing, it really resonated with me because, you know, providing a solution and making sure that when people are coming into the space, you know, everybody's shooting in the dark, uh, especially when it comes to Web3. There's not really, you know, uh, one resource or or one path that somebody could take. So seeing what Wallet Guard was doing with their security dashboard, and also the spaces that they were, you know, educating people with, it just felt like the right fit uh, for me to, you know, pretty much dedicate my my full time to this. Those are both pretty amazing stories, but you know, with, with the fact that it's security and you have this background, it's really cool. I think that there's also still kind of a hesitancy with people for downloading certain things in the space in general. So how do you gain the trust of people to download this? And obviously you guys have started building a name, so it's a little bit easier, but when you first started out, how was that process of onboarding more people? 
Honestly, people took a chance on us, to be honest. Like, it is 100% somebody took a chance on us. Like, in the beginning, um, like, what we were doing was a lot of Twitter spaces, right? And our zero to a thousand followers on Twitter was nonstop being in Twitter spaces, talking with the community, educating, learning alongside the community even, um, and really providing updates. Uh, so through that, we've built up like a rapport with the community, especially as someone they could look to for security advice or even just uh, security education. Then on top of it, our extension itself is actually one of the least permissive extensions out there, security related um, for Web3. Uh, we only at the current moment look at your URL, like the URL you're visiting. Um, so it like utilizes like uh, the permission set for like browser history in um, Chrome is just the way how Chrome does it. It doesn't even matter like how you use it. It just it's a blanket permission. Um, but in general, it's like one of the least permissive extensions that are out there. Um, so when you install it, it tells you specifically what it does. Like it doesn't connect to your wallet or anything like that. Um, at the end of the month, though, we are going open source um, and we are also introducing transaction simulation and analysis. Um, so that's going to be a massive product release for us. And essentially, that's going to allow people, like, for example, in this Kevin Rose situation, like, if he were on that website, um, he would be prompted with um, a wallet guard to come up and simulate the transaction, which would give you kind of a clear, readable understanding of what's happening, whether, like, you know, your assets are all going out of your wallet, what exactly are you signing is essentially what you're going to know uh, with the new feature that wallet guard is dropping at the end of the month. Yeah, and, and also when it when it comes to building that brand trust, you know, doing those spaces, making sure they're recorded, that people could listen back to them. You know, even if one person, if it helped one person not get rugged, you know, outside of just wallet guard the extension, but all the tips and the security dashboard that we have that really provides people with details, like that's worth millions of dollars to us. You know, somebody helping somebody save their wallets and understand, you know, to be vigilant when they're out there and, and really know what tools to use that's what really built up the brand trust. And then we see people, you know, posting about it, how WalletGuard helped them out, helped them avoid a rug or a scam website. And over time, we also had MetaMask um, as well as Nervos. Uh, it's, essentially, it's th there's been a lot of brand trust that's been built up over time. And now we're nearing almost 30,000 followers. So we're, we're getting there, you know, on Twitter, we're getting to that to that point as well to show those numbers and make sure that we have the following and the audience that knows like where to go to for that security information. One thing that I noticed is somebody that tweeted about you guys yesterday, or maybe it was this morning, they highlighted that MetaMask was actually not updated and that your thing picked that up. So does MetaMask need to be updated? What's the info kind of on that? Cause I, I thought that was something that I was like, oh, I didn't even realize that was a thing. Yeah, so Chrome doesn't natively update right away, like all your browser extensions for you. So what our dashboard does is sends you an alert when your MetaMask or Phantom is out of date. We're actually adding support for like another four wallets at the end of this uh, release as well. And essentially, anytime you have these wallets installed, we're monitoring and letting you know if your version that you have installed is out of date compared to the latest version that was released. Yeah, it's a very common misconception that the extensions or the browser itself automatically updates you know sometimes it does it in in waves uh sometimes it's you know on a scheduled task and it's not necessarily running 24 7 so getting wallet uh security updates getting those those up those extensions up to date is super important and that's another thing that wallet guards you know making sure it gets done that is a neat Oh, the <laughs> okay. So I, I was scrolling through your site and the state of Web3 security. I look at the table of contents and I'm like, wow. Okay, these were all like massive issues. So the FTX wallet drainer, airdrop scans, uh, the Gala inf Infinite Mint, zero transfer scams, fake apps, monkey drainer, uh, Twitter data data breach, Chrome zero day, uh, lapless clipper, and how guard can help you. So. Not, I don't know every single one of these, but I'd say about 90%. I remember exactly what happened with these. So can you give kind of like a quick TLDR for uh, the security volume PDF of like what you guys have in there? Any things that might be need to know uh, for people that are tuned in and, you know, why you kind of launched this? Is this a way to kind of help educate people or is it a way to get people to understand what you're doing? So the reason we launched that was more so to start collecting information and like cataloging events that happened in Web3. Like we do a lot of like threads or tweets about these topics. However, 
uh, we've noted that nobody's really cataloging them. Um, maybe there are some people out there cataloging them, which would be great if I can find that info. But um, for our own information and also just to educate the public is the reason we started to do this, um, mainly to like recap the latest events so people can kind of go through this at their own pleasure um, and read through it. I mean, I've noticed the people that are probably more interested in reading it are people who are like security researchers themselves um, or just people who are like, you know, passionate about security or even just want to learn more. So with security kind of being a major issue within the space, how do you kind of foresee the future within the blockchains? Because I obviously see where everyone's saying, hey, the future is going to be multi-chain. But at the same time, if somebody can get drained from just having like a bad transaction, is it the, the user interface that needs to be changed where, you know, there's more wallet guards out there? Or do you think that there's going to be something that's like natively changed within MetaMask? Or how do you guys kind of foresee the evolution of security and blockchain? It, it, yeah, it's, it's a it's growth, right? Like there, there's there been an evolution in, in all these different uh, dApps and created creations of all these dApps over time. And the interface, you know, it, it's very bare metal right now. It, it's going to get better over time. And I think that once the interface is more user readable as opposed to what a lot of people are seeing which is signatures and contracts that they can't necessarily read uh simply um you know that's going to be a, a big difference when it comes down to you know making sure that the th these applications are are presenting the data the right way to the end users and and the end user understand how to interact with it plus all of the tools that go behind it you know you can, it, it's very uh it's very scary for me to think that someone's jumping into web3 without even understanding how to like manage their web two lifestyle, their web two data life, like their their credentials, their passwords, right? Let alone thinking about where they're gonna do or what they're gonna do with their seed phrase. So this is all goes full circle with education and and you know, making sure that the interfaces are also like like we're talking about a little easier. Alma, I don't know if you had a comment on that. I think the biggest problems in security as it stands, or sorry, in Web3 as it stands, especially when it comes to adoption, is security, UI, and UX. So that being said, um, I know for a fact that MetaMask and other uh, wallets out there are looking to improve their UI. It's an important thing uh, to happen mainly because once we have a better UI, I think that is also going to lead to a decrease in scams just because people don't really understand what they're signing, um, which is the reason why like things like WalletGuard um, and some of these other tools out there are coming about to provide a user with a better UI and a better experience in general. Like The way we want WalletGuard to be perceived is really as your personal security companion in Web3. Uh, so if that paints a better picture. Yeah, for sure. Now, do you guys have any kind of like mobile support or is it just browser based right now? So at the moment, we're very much an extension. Uh, so we have these two APIs that we've been working on, our uh, B2B phishing detection API and our transaction simulation API, which should be released in the next week here. The main intent behind those is for like, you know, any wallet providers who would want to integrate uh, any of these phishing detection solutions or transaction uh, analysis solutions. Um, but as far as mobile is concerned, <clears throat> mobile, we don't have an avenue very much into yet. Now, I know MetaMask is working on MetaMask Snaps and MetaMask Snaps essentially allows MetaMask to become like a plugin store. And the plugin store, you can go and download the wallet guard snap, and that would allow us like an avenue onto mobile. Um, however, that's a little further out. And I got to yeah. go. Oh, sorry. Go yeah. ahead. Sorry about that. Uh, no, I was just going to say, you know, w when it comes to the end user, though, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to we're trying to do a lot of the the process for the end user, meaning it, a lot of these scam websites, you know, they're popping up very you know within a 24 hour to a 48 hour period the domains are getting registered and dumped very quickly uh there's there's different content that it, that we're looking out for to make sure that we're not allowing you to enter that website uh and also that that website isn't recently spun up so for the end user it's really just adding another layer of defense and nothing's 100 percent secure so no matter how many how many protections you have in place you obviously still have to stay vigilant 
but uh, you know, adding something that basically knocks out 99% of the garbage and wallet drainers and, and bad contracts that people are seeing uh, is obviously the most logical step there. So looking down at the chat here, and if you guys have any questions uh, that you want me to ask, happy to do so. But Willis, luckily my wallet is all worthless NFTs, so no worries about scammer interest. <laughs> You're hilarious. Uh, and Juice is asking, when will there be a Firefox extension? Okay, This is a fun one. We get asked this one a lot. So yeah. the Firefox extension we're hoping to do as soon as possible. Uh, the main limitations previously were um, some of the compatibilities with porting over the code. Um, however, since we're moving over to our new architecture that we've been developing the past couple of months, um, it, it should make that a lot more feasible. And hopefully we can implement that uh, in the coming month or the following. Love it. Love it. Uh, the comments that I've seen uh, recently with the, with the Kevin Rose hack, and sorry to keep bringing this up, but I just think it's relevant. A lot of people are saying, oh, if he had a ledger, this wouldn't have happened. But I'm under the assumption, like, if he signed a transaction that was a, you know, transfer, transfer all function or something, that being on a ledger or a hardware wallet would have no impact on that. Am I correct with that? So the only benefit of using a ledger here is that there would have been a hardware approval, right? And that would have been him like manually approving it. But in, at the same time, he still manually approved it by clicking it, right? So in theory, just having a ledger wouldn't have saved him. Um, if he was, you know, using a ledger in the proper manners, like having, I'm sure he, he was, I'm sure that this was one of his wallets that got hit. I don't, I assume it's not all of his NFTs. So he's probably has different wallet setups. Um, so what I recommend to people is that if you have a ledger, you want to treat it as a vault. Um, and what I mean by that is you only send assets in and out and you use like the ledger live uh, interface to interact with that wallet. Um, simply put, you're not connecting to any dApps. You're not um, doing anything with it particularly. It's mainly just designed to hold assets and for a longer term. So the other thing I wanted to ask is just like on your Twitter profile here, you have the incubation S5 for Binance Labs. And we've had a couple different projects that have come through that are like within incubator process or uh, programs. And I think Doge Pound was one of the most recent uh, ones regarding that. But w what's it like working with Binance? And how did you guys come along to uh, being a part of their incubator? So... Binance reached out to us initially. We were talking, we were in different types of conversations. Don't want to talk much about it, but um, we were in different types of conversations and it seemed like a better fit to do the Binance incubation program. Uh, they have like, they had over like 900 applicants. I think they just sent us a form and I think we just filled out the form and it just kind of moved along the process. Um, and they ended up selecting about 12 projects. And the way it actually worked from there is they sent us out to Paris. Um, so I was in Paris for a few weeks with the Binance team um, and our entire team was there as well. Um, and they kind of just have like different courses. They educate you on different topics. Uh, a lot of them were pertaining to like token um, economics and stuff like that. Um, with Wallet Card, we don't really plan on having a token. I don't think there's really a need for it. Um, just given like the way that the project is really designed, I don't think there's a need for it. And so, it, you know, it was cool to learn um, a lot about like business development and stuff like that. Uh, another really interesting thing they do is a thing called Demo Day, which is actually coming up next week. Uh, and demo day is like a, a pitch in front of like 500 different investors as well, which is very interesting. Um, but it's an awesome experience. I mean, like the connections and um, even the other projects that we met while we were there from a networking perspective, it's a great experience. That's neat. I <laughs> I feel like that'd be a kind of once once in a lifetime experience that way. But I mean, do you guys go or are you planning on going to NFT NYC or any of these like in person events or just kind of strictly staying online? Um, we we do try to go to in person events. Like we'll be at ETH Denver. I actually just got my approval for ETH Denver just a bit ago. Um, ETH Denver is a good one. 
Consensus is a good one. We're actually going to host our own virtual conference for Web3 security called SCAM, which is Security and, uh, security and Crypto Appreciation Meetup. So originally it was going to be an IRL conference. We're actually going to do it as a virtual conference for the first year. Um, given how the traction goes with it, then we can plan for maybe a future IRL event for it. Uh, and at the moment, um, Michael, maybe if you want to talk about like how we're planning on going about it with the whole metaverse design. Yeah, so we're trying to deploy a wallet guard security center in Decentraland, uh, which is going to be sitting on a 32 parcel estate, which has a security base of knowledge. So you could jump in wherever you are in the world, directly into Decentraland, check out different ways that wallet guard is working in the back end and different features of wallet guard. And we're also looking to get other security sponsors into that virtual base so that there could be one source for security that way people know where to go. And it also brings the metaverse aspect into it because metaverse is a big part of web three and, you know, being able to deploy out onto the metaverse, have a live stream, maybe a conference, you know, go, get something going for the users as well as new people trying to see what the security is all about. It's, it's going to do a full circle for education and, and engaging uh, the Web3 users. That's cool. The kind of future here for you guys, what, what are some things in the pipeline here? Obviously, we talked a little bit about Firefox and whatnot, but is there any kind of like big updates or things you're working for that you're able to tell us about? Uh, so in the coming weeks, uh, we're releasing that transaction simulation feature, which is going to be a massive feature for us. Uh, so we're changing up the flow a bit of how our phishing protection works because right now it's like a proactive phishing protection that looks at several different heuristics on a website and tries to determine whether the likelihood of phishing is high or is not high. Um, and given with the current model, like the way that Wallet Guard works is like false positives, but are it's part of the game, right? You're going to have a lot of false positives when it comes to phishing protection. So what we're releasing at the end of the month is going to be helping us a lot with uh, false positives. So that's going to be a really exciting update, um, mainly just from a usability perspective, um, so that we're not blocking anything that might be a false positive, or at least mitigating false positives as much as possible. And then introducing the transaction simulation bit is going to help people, like if they go to a website to mint, claim, whatever they're doing, uh, they would be able to simulate that interaction and know exactly what's happening to their wallet once they uh, initiate a transaction. Got a lot down the pipeline. How does it work in terms of like, I mean, do you view things as competition? Like, is there anybody else that's doing things similar to you guys? Or do you kind of feel like, hey, we have like our own kind of specific niche within this? So we definitely have our own niche when it comes to phishing protection. However, there are other people out there doing transaction simulation. Like, for example, Kevin Rose tweeted out today about like join fire. I think he was going to try. Um but he also like followed us and dm'd us so it sure or we dm'd him or something like that so hopefully uh we can set up a call and talk a little bit more about wallet card as well however there are some other solutions out there on the market like uh i know join fires one i know pocket universe is another there's another pretty cool one that i like to recommend to people um is called revoke cash so revoke cash everybody knows about like you know their website however they also have an extension which is pretty good for like signature analysis However, a wallet guard at the end of the month will be providing a lot of those functionalities as well. But I do think, you know, there are some other really cool players in the space. And out of just simple curiosity, do you talk to many other like providers like that? Sorry, could you? Uh... So, so like, sorry, I, I guess like in terms of like revoke.cash and, and some of these other ones, do you guys have any kind of like working relationships with them? Or is it kind of just like, a, hey, you're doing your thing and we're, we're doing ours? Oh, I was actually just in New York with Roscoe, who's the he's like the sole brain behind uh, Revoke Cash. So I was just in New York with them, and I was spending some time with them. So I just hung out with him a bit. Uh, yeah, we definitely, so we, we definitely like to interface with you know everybody that we can, considering we're all trying to do the same thing, at least in our eyes, which is secure the space. So you know we're we're interfacing with Revoke Cash. We're we're actually doing a. Uh, a security session with the founder of Meta, MetaMask, Dan Finley, uh, this Sunday in our security spaces. And we also have, you know, different DM and Twitter groups set up with multiple people in the space that are revolving around security and that are actual, you know, creators or managers of, 
of these dApps that are being built out. So we, we want to interface with as many people as we can and, and be able to build out you know, the security space and, and our product and their product. I mean, at the end of the day, it's helping everybody to, to, to communicate. Yeah. Something I'm, yes, yeah, so just a quick mention, like something I'm really proud of is like, since we started in this space um, in the network we've built, like we created a group chat on Twitter. <laughs> it's like 75, like really brilliant security folks, um, founders of like Pocky Universe, founders of Revoke Cash and some other tools in the industry. Um, so these people are awesome and it's a very active group chat where we're always talking about the latest threats. So, um, you know, networking collaboration, like Michael had stated is a very, very big thing for us. W and we got actually a few questions here for the chat. So Will's is saying, why can't MetaMask just implement the security directly? Yeah, you know, funny enough, I was just talking with someone from MetaMask like five minutes before this call. Uh, the issue is, that a lot of these security features, one, they take time to develop. Two, it takes a lot of uh, UI UX research um, from a perspective of someone who has like, a, like let's say MetaMask, for example, right? MetaMask has like 50 million downloads. So like you have to be really careful when you're making design decisions and releasing a PR and all those types of things. Whereas when we're operating on a much smaller scale, it's a lot easier for us to iterate on these things faster. And once the concept is proven, I'm sure people like MetaMask would want to adopt certain concepts that we're building upon yeah moving moving on such a large base of people you know can can have unprecedented results and it's more of a focus of you know they're a wallet provider obviously security should be tied with it but you know that's that's a, that's a major decision and and i think when it comes down to it like we're that's what we're focused on right the security space and they're focused on the asset management you know making sure you have a tool for your assets and the other question we got in here is from a security savant themselves. Uh, Juice is asking, where do I apply for a job with Wallet Guard? Sorry, are you guys hiring at all or what's the uh, outlook for that? So we just finished our fundraise. However, we are not hiring at the moment. We will maybe be, we will be hiring probably closer to May um, or June. If there are anybody, uh, is there anybody out there who's really good with UI UX? Uh, we're definitely looking at freelance gigs. So definitely reach out. Yeah, love it. So, uh, so as we wrap it up here, is there any kind of final things you want people just to know about? I know we've gone over a lot here, but maybe kind of like a quick summary or anything that uh, you feel is worth mentioning here. Yeah, I was, yeah. was going to say real quick, if you want, I could share my screen and just give you a quick example. of. Yeah, sure. I'd love that. All right, cool. Give me one second here. Nope, take your time. No worries. Sign yeah. into one of my wallets that has a bunch of bored apes in it. And I'm going <laughs> to for us uh, live. So let's do this here. Okay, uh, let me know if you could see this screen. Uh, let me just pop it out on the screen and then, yep, we're gonna go. Awesome. So uh, yeah, so essentially this is the security dashboard. Um, this is what the extension looks like when you tap on it. So you can see everything in one place, like your wallet with the wallet checkers, the transaction simulation, which is coming up as well as any recent alerts and extension information that you have installed. So we really try to make everything super streamlined and clean. But uh, right now I'm signed into my wallet that has a decent amount of assets in it. And we're taking a look at a completely fake uh, 10K TF Twitter uh, post telling us about a mint that's coming out. And they're using Linktree to basically subvert uh, having to post a link that clearly looks fake and, and gets more people to click on it. So as we're on this page, there's an option to mint uh, this NFT. So what we're going to do, we're going to tap on that and we'll see that while the guard immediately detects phishing, it's stating that the website might be harmful um, and it's letting us know, you know, to go back to the dashboard and also if it's a false positive, but in this case, it clearly is not. So before your wallet, before your browser, before your page even, you know, interacts with the site, we're stopping it and we're making sure that there's not really a, a, a question as to, you know, hey, do you, you should think about entering this website first. Obviously, sometimes there are false positives, which is why we provide a proceed anyway option. But, you know, at least there's a layer of defense there and it's and it's automatic. Uh, so even if you're typing the website name wrong, it's going to pick that up. You know, you type OpenC with an extra E, it's going to pick that up. So not only is it doing the active protection, but also those different kind of heuristics on the name itself. That's awesome. I love that. So that's, just that's to mention, example of Wallet Guard. Yeah, and just to mention, it's completely free to use at the moment. We do plan on monetizing this around June, so take advantage of it while you can. 
Uh, so we will definitely have some sort of trial models or something along that line later down the road. At the moment, completely free to use as we're developing our features, testing and doing all that fun stuff. Uh, so definitely leverage it while you can, completely free. Just go to walletguard.app and you can click the download link from there. It'll take you to the Chrome web page and it's a simple one-click install. There's no setup required at the moment. Like there's nothing you really have to do. We do plan on introducing some additional things that you can do later down the road, like add if you're beginner, intermediate, advanced, and that can kind of change the flow for you a little bit so maybe you won't be presented with as many false positives um or if you're you know a complete beginner maybe you're presented with even more like you know protections and different heuristics are triggering for you um based on your newness to the space i i mean i love it i got, I got nothing else more to say on that that's really cool and i i appreciate you taking the time to show us what that looks like because that's uh that's really neat and i might have to uh go install it because i haven't yet and that's that's one of the things i just wanted to you know see see because the, the the problem as i said earlier like the the trust in the space right like you want to make sure that you're not getting scammed and then further to that you know for this people that say hey we got security features to help you you got to make sure that you're legit that way so that, that's awesome and i really appreciate you guys uh, taking the time today here for this this is this is really really cool no nah, thanks for thanks for having us uh von schiller man this is this has been an awesome little session that we had going i'm glad you know that there was there was the opportunity to speak about wallet guard because you know it, it's it's channels like yours that are going to help you know, get our name out there even even more. So greatly appreciate you and the, and the time. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, gentlemen, enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, maybe we'll chat sometime soon. Awesome. Well, definitely let us know. Take care now. Hundred uh, percent. All right, peace, peace.